Hello, my name is Tony Phillips. I'm author of The Complete Guide to Fujifilm's X100F. Is the X100F the ideal street camera? I think it is. Before we get into the whys and wherefores of that, let's consider some tips. Then we'll dive into my thinking on why this is such a great street camera and finish with my thoughts on the all-out best feature of Fujifilm's X100F. In my book on the X100F, there are over 400 tips and tweaks that you can apply to your camera. Let's just have a look at a couple of them. If you use auto ISO, then here's a tip for quickly switching between your three auto ISO presets. I assign auto ISO to the left arrow key as a function button, and by doing this I can press the left arrow key, jump into the auto ISO selections, up or down to the one which I want, and then press the left arrow key again, and it's done. By using almost any other function button on the camera, what happens is that you can go into the functions, scroll up and down using the arrow keys, and then if you press the button, it actually dives you deeper into the settings which belong to each of those presets. So I assign auto ISO setting to the left arrow key, up or down, and then left arrow key, and I'm out again. The ISO dial on the X100F is the same as the ISO dial on the X-Pro. In order to use it, you lift and rotate. Some people find this a little bit hard to use, and Fujifilm have built in a soft switching ISO method in this camera. In order to use it, you need to go to the button dial settings and select ISO dial setting A. If you switch it to command, now you leave the ISO dial on A, and the front dial provides you with ISO adjustments. You can select all ISO settings, including your three auto ISO presets. There's something a little bit frustrating in this method for me because the auto ISO presets are here and if you dial slightly off them then you're at 51,200. I've never really wanted to go from an auto ISO preset to 51,200 ISO. I usually want to select in the, amongst the lower ranges. So I would have preferred to see the auto ISO presets start and then go into the lower ISO ranges. Now if you have your exposure compensation dial on C, the front dial adjusts exposure compensation and you can see this in the left gauge and in the uh, change of exposure on the screen. If you're using both a soft switching ISO method and the exposure compensation dial on C, then you switch between these by pressing the front dial inwards. Let's switch it up now and talk about something mechanical. I use what's called a soft shutter release button on my camera. I do this so that I can hold the camera close in my hand like this and rest the pad of my finger on the shutter release button rather than using the tip of my finger and losing some control over the camera. Soft shutter release buttons are quite cheap and you can find them on the internet. But one of the things that you might like to do is to buy some rubber o-rings. Now this is a typical o-ring that you can buy in an auto parts store. It's about a three millimeter hole in the center and it's quite thick. This is the o-ring which I bought. It's slightly smaller in diameter in the center hole, but that's quite fine. But it's very thin, and that's what it looks like when it's fitted onto the soft shutter release button. Fitting it is quite easy. It only really requires a couple of turns, and then the button locks into place. Again, then it makes it easy for me to hold the camera and to brace it nicely and to rest the pad of my finger in the soft shutter release button for shooting. If you had a previous X100 camera, then you might have come across this issue where the camera would choose to focus on something inside of the focus frame, which you may not have wanted in focus. The X100F focuses on high contrast, as did previous cameras, but it now chooses to focus on whatever is the closest subject inside the frame. As you can see in this example, I've set up the X-T20 and a microphone, and they're about 12 inches or 30 centimeters apart. When I press the shutter button, you can see that the camera now chooses to focus on what is the closest to it, which has high contrast, even though uh, the remainder of the subject takes up most of the area of the focus frame. As you can see, this is quite accurate. The camera is choosing to focus on the foreground subject over and above anything in the, in the background. Okay, now back to what makes this such a great street shooter. First of all, it has the same 24 megapixel sensor as the X-T2 and the X-Pro2, and it produces outstanding image quality. If you've owned a previous X100F series camera, then this camera is considerably faster in focus and in operation. This is the fastest X100F series camera to date. 
It has the same great menu system as the latest crop of X100F cameras. It's logically divided into image quality settings, focus settings, both manual and auto, shooting settings, flash, movies, and then camera setup. There's also a My Menu, which if you populate any of the menu items into the My Menu, then the menu opens to the My Menu immediately. Like many of the previous X cameras, this camera has a, a Q menu system as well. And the Q menu is highly customizable. You can choose what you want in each of these 16 slots. There's much more to the X100F though. Of course, it has the same hybrid optical and electronic viewfinder as previous X100s. It's unobtrusive. In fact, this would be one of the most unobtrusive cameras I've ever used. I mean, take it out into the streets shooting and people just don't seem to notice it. Not like they do with a camera that has a more prominent looking lens. Even a lens like this 35mm f2 on this tiny X-T20. My favourite feature of this camera is really the real high speed sync. Because the lens has a leaf shutter which will sync at a much higher speed than a traditional focal plane shutter. This camera can be used successfully with flash up to shutter speeds of one two thousandth of a second. Where it really excels is outside in broad sunlight. We can both shoot at high shutter speeds to reduce ambient light, use the flash to lift your foreground subject, and if you like, you can turn on the camera's internal ND filter, which drops a glass ND filter over the lens and shoot wide open at f2 in full sunlight. This is a fairly magical combination and allows you to do things that you just can't produce with other cameras. In fact, some of the images have an almost 3D quality about them, which makes them really kind of attractive and unique and different from what you can do with most stuff. If you shoot weddings and the like, then this is a feature which is perhaps worth investigating for the added benefit that it will bring to your photography. Well, that's it for now. These are the kind of insights you can find in my book. This is a printed copy of my X-T2 book, and you can now obtain the X100F book in print on demand in either colour or black and white. You can also obtain it as a PDF from my website or, the, or freedmanarchives.com, and it also comes in Mobi and EPUB for electronic readers. Let me show you quickly the PDF version of the book. So this is the reading experience you get with a PDF book. It's fully hyperlinked, all the electronic forms are fully hyperlinked, so that you can simply select uh, something that you want to go further with and jump to that particular section. If you buy the book, I'm also offering a free 100 plus page bonus book on Fujifilm lighting, including the use of umbrellas, softboxes, uh, wireless flash and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.